In this video we're going to look at a story problem that uh, involves the area of a rectangle and it's also going to involve solving a quadratic equation when we get it all set up. So let's take a look. The length of a rectangular flower bed is 7 feet less than 3 times its width. The area of the bed is 20 square feet. Find the dimensions of the flower bed. So dimensions they're asking us for both the length and the width. First thing when you're doing a story problem, you want to make sure you read it and understand what's happening. So I made you a nice flower bed here. Um, and what do we know about this flower bed? Well, we know the area of the bed is 20 square feet. So right off the bat, we should be thinking area of a rectangle and asking ourselves, do we know how to find the area of a rectangle? Hopefully, you remember that area of a rectangle is length times width. Okay, and then they're telling us that the length is 7 feet less than 3 times the width. And we need to piece this all together. And we know that the area is 20, so we know 20 is going to be the length times the width. Now we could do this equation, we could do this with two equations and two unknowns, but uh, some of you might be seeing that. I think I'll just try to keep it to one variable here. Now, a lot of times it's hard for people to decide what variable to pick. Well, let's look at this, um, this fact right here. The length of the rectangular flower bed is 7 feet less than 3 times its width. So the length is being described in terms of the width. They're telling us how long, the, how long it is um, in relation to the width. The length is 7 feet longer than 3 times the width. Well, we don't know the width. So that's what you want to pick your variable to be. You don't want to pick your variable to be L because L is the length is being described in terms of the width. So pick your variable to be W. So now that we have the width defined as W, and we could put another W over here for our width, then we can describe the length in terms of W, the length with W's in it. So we know the length is 7 feet less than 3 times the width. So if we took 3 times the width, it's 7 less than that. Can you think of how you would write that? 3 times the width, 3 times the width, and then 7 less than that. So we got 3 times the width and 7 less than that. Now I purposefully said that backwards from how it was written. It's written 7 feet less than 3 times the width. And a lot of people would just go 7 feet less than 3 times the width. And that isn't quite right. It's actually backwards. And it does make a difference what order that you write it when you're subtracting because subtraction is not commutative. The words that you want to watch out for in a story problem where you have to switch the order is any time that less than is being used for subtraction, then you have to subtract whatever that is at the end. So if I just, for example, and I'll erase this, but if I said 2 less than x. Well, that's x take away 2. 2 less than x is whatever x is subtract 2. So notice how the order got switched from the way it's written uh, in English versus the way it's written uh, as a mathematical expression. So you really want to watch out for that. Okay, let's get rid of this stuff here and continue solving our problem. Alright, so now we know that the, um, the bottom is also 3w 3 times the width and 7 less than that. Now we look at our formula. 20 equals the length times the width. We know that this width times this length is going to equal 20. So we know that 20 is going to equal w times 3w minus 7. Now I could have written that the other way. It wouldn't have mattered if I wrote 3w plus or minus 7 times w length times width or width times length, that order doesn't matter because multiplication is commutative. The order doesn't matter. So there's our equation. That's really the big step right there is writing that equation. Now we need to solve it. Okay, so we're going to distribute the w and we get 20 equals 3w squared minus 7w. Now solving this equation, we the big thing that should be glaring at us is this squared. Whenever you have a squared in an equation, you can't just solve for w by getting your numbers on one side and getting your w's on the other and that kind of thing. When you have a squared, it's a quadratic equation. And so in order to solve it, you have to first set it equal to 0 and then see if you can factor it. 3w squared minus 7w minus 20. 
And if we can't factor it, we would have to use something called the quadratic equation. But I think this one is going to factor. Let's see if we can um, figure out what it would be. So since there's a number in front of the w squared, that means it's going to be a little more complicated factoring. If there wasn't a number there, we could just say what multiplies to be negative 20 and adds to be negative 7. But here we want to use the AC method. And if you haven't watched my video on the AC method already, you would want to do that at this point if you're not sure how to factor this. So our A value is C. Remember the AC method, we're going to set up a little thing like this and figure out um, what multiplies what uh, multiplies to be a times c and adds to be b. So our a is 3 and our c is negative 20. So a times c would be negative 60. So we have to figure out what multiplies to be negative 60 and adds to be b, which is negative 7. Now if you want to, it might be a, a good idea to stop the video and see if you can figure it out. Uh, it's good practice to do that. And then just start the video again. Well, um, we know that it's going to have to be one positive and one negative to multiply to be a negative. So let's just start thinking about things that multiply to be 60. So we know uh, 1 and 60, but that's not going to give you 7. Since one positive and one negative, they're going to end up subtracting to be 7. They need to be 7 apart from each other. So 1 and 60 is too far apart. 2 times 30 is 60, but again, that's too far apart, right? Because that's 28 apart. So we want to get closer. We're looking for two numbers that are closer to each other. Um, we've got 3 times 20. That's getting closer. Uh, 4 times 15. That's 11 apart. Let's see. Let's see. What else? 1, 2, 3, 4. Does 5 go into 60? Yep, 5 would go into 60. How many times? 5 times what is 60? I think that's 12. So there you go, 5 and 12 are going to multiply to be 60, and they're 7 apart. So I need it to be a negative 7, so I'm going to use a negative 12 and a positive 5. That multiplies to be negative 60 and adds to be negative 7. From the ACE factoring using the AC method video, I suggested if you have one positive and one negative, that you always put the negative first, because now you're going to go over here and you're going to rewrite this middle term your 7, negative 7w, and you're going to split it up into negative 12w plus 5w. And if you put the negative first, it makes the next step uh, a little easier. So now we've got four terms, and we're going to do factor by grouping. So we'll group the first two and the last two together. And by putting the negative with the 12, we don't have a negative here that we have to worry about putting in the parentheses and all that. Now you look at each parenthesis and you ask yourself what's the greatest common factor. This would be another good spot if you're familiar with this to pause the video and work through it and then watch the video. It's always better to kind of stay one step ahead if you can. What goes into both 3w squared and 12w? Well, we know 3 goes into both 3 and 12 and we have a w squared and a w, so w can go into both those. So if I take that out, I have w minus 4 left in those parentheses. And I go to the next parenthesis, what goes into both 5w and 20 would just be 5. So if I factor that out, I have w minus 4. And you could check these factorings by distributing back in and see that you do get that. When you're doing factor by grouping, you know you're on the right track if what's in these two parentheses comes out to be the same. That's a good sign. So we're actually going to factor out what's in the two parentheses, w minus 4. And then what we have left is 3w plus 5. And we have it factored. OK, we're almost there. Now that we have it factored, we need to set each factor equal to 0. If two things multiply together to be 0, then one of them has to be 0. So either w minus 4 would have to be 0, or 3w plus 5 would have to be 0. And then we can solve these the traditional, or the linear way, I should say, by getting your w on one side and your numbers on the other. So if we add 4 to this side, we would get w equals 4. And I'm running out of room, so I didn't show that. Maybe I should show this other one. I'll erase this over here. I'll go over here and do this uh, 3w plus 5 equals 0. Because this is a two-stepper, and it might not be as easy for some people to see. So if I'm going to solve that, I want to get w by itself, so I'm going to minus 5 from both sides. So I get 3w equals negative 5, 
and then to get w by itself I'm going to divide by 3 so I get w equals negative 5 thirds which is negative 1 and 2 thirds so I'll write that over here now when you have a quadratic you can and a lot of times do come up with two different solutions so we came up with w equals 4 and w equals negative 1 and 2 thirds but when you're working with a story problem you have a context and you need to see if that answer makes sense within that context remember w represents the width of our garden and we certainly cannot have a negative width so we actually uh, just throw that answer out say no that does not work within the context of our problem so the answer would be 4 w equals 4 well let's go ahead and check this and make sure it works I'm going to erase this part we'll do a check which is always a good idea if you have time on a test to do a check if you don't if time is an issue you know just go on to the next one and then come back and check if you have time at the end so um, we got w equals four so that would mean the width would be four feet and actually we were supposed to find both the dimensions so we would want to find the length as well and we know the length is three times w which we now know is four take away seven so three times four is twelve take away seven would be five feet and we have the width is four feet and the length is five feet and that does come out to be twenty square feet which is what we were supposed to get so that looks good that is definitely the correct answer well there's a lot of steps to this uh... if this is still a little vague to you i would suggest starting the video again from the beginning and trying to work through the whole problem by yourself without watching the video and then start the video and see where you got hung up or just if you got it all right fantastic but if you are getting hung up at some certain point you need to do it on your own to figure out at what point that you're getting um, getting stuck and then watch the video to help you get unstuck and do it again as many times as you need to do until you can do the whole thing by yourself